I'm going to talk about a few of the things that Brother Phil talked about in Sunday school this morning. I'm going to try to deal with the, the craziness I had to deal with yesterday of a young, young woman leaving this life early. We, a lot of things we don't understand. I'm going to try to get some hope from comfort from the Word of God. Ecclesiastes 3.11, the Bible says, He has made everything beautiful in His time. Also, he has set the world in their hearts so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, Lord, but we do know that you love us, that you care about us, Lord, and we belong to you. And just as we love our children, Lord, we know that you love your children. Uh, Lord, give us strength and give us hope and give us courage to stay in the fight and stay in the battle, Lord, and and let the battle be yours. We give it to you today, Lord. Help us to have understanding uh, according to your word. Help me hold me up by the power of your might, and we'll give you praise and glory. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. A lot of things come into our lives. uh, As Christians, as anybody, we find it very difficult to understand. I dealt with a man uh, this week who said he was mad at God over what had happened. And I told him that it's not God's fault. When God finished his creation, he looked at his creation and said, it is good. Another place he said, it's very good. Isn't God's fault the way things are in this world today? It's man's rebellion against God that causes all the problems. My, my, but uh, this young lady we just buried... Uh, five children, beautiful children. And uh, I, can't, I can't pretend. I can't pretend to know the reasons uh, for that kind of thing happening. And, and you can't either. Uh, sometimes we just don't know, and that's where faith comes in. You know, when David lost his infant son, you know what David said? It's uh, penned in Psalms 119, 169. David said this. He said, Let my cry come near before thee. O Lord, give me understanding according to thy word. David said, give me understanding according to thy word. Over in Deuteronomy 29, 29, the Bible says, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. So now, even though there are things that come along uh, in our lives that we don't understand, perhaps we will never know until we get to glory. Uh, The Bible says that uh, in that day, it said we will have the mind of Christ. Won't that be a wonderful thing? Uh, To have that scripture revealed as the scriptures were open to those men uh, on the way to Emmaus. You know, those those scriptures become open and plain to us. And and why this happened and why that happened. We'll have the mind of Christ to know then what we don't know now. Jesus told his disciples in uh, John 13, 7, he said, What I do now, ye know not. Thou knowest not now, he said. But thou shalt know hereafter. But with all that said, the Bible said there are some things that we can know and can understand according to God's word. First of all, we know that God is God. The Bible says he that cometh to God must believe that he is. If you're not on that page, if you don't believe that God is, you're going to have a tough time. You're going to have a tough time the rest of your life and a tough time in the afterlife. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. In Psalms 46.10, a scripture said, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen and I will be exalted in the earth. And the the prophet Isaiah uh, recorded this. The Lord said in Isaiah 45, I am God and there is none else. Jesus Christ, the visible image of the invisible God. God manifest in the flesh. The Bible says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. 
Uh, we know from Romans eleven thirty three that God's ways are past finding out. Job uh, eleven seven, uh, the scripture says, "Canst thou by searching find out God? You can't figure Him out with a court order. You can't find God out. You can find out some things about God as He reveals it to us. Canst thou find out the Almighty under perfection?" Secondly, we can know that God is love. We know that much about him. He's holy. And he's, it's a love beyond anything I can understand other than the fact that he loved me enough to die for me, to go to the cross and pay my sin to what the debt. Man, that's something. That's a hard one to figure out. And we have known, it says in 1 John 4, 16, we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. Paul said in Romans 8, 38, For I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We also know from Scripture that God's ways are higher than our ways. God says, I know some things that you don't know, and I understand some things that you don't understand. Mm. You'll find that in Isaiah 55, 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, saith the Lord, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And, you know, although God's uh, thoughts are higher than our thoughts, we know that God's thoughts toward us our thoughts of peace. Man, you need to pick up on that. One place the Lord says, I am for you. Aren't you for your children? You for your kids? I am for you. Jeremiah 29, 11, he said, I know, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. So things come into our lives. Some, some craziness happens in our lives and we start trying to figure it out and sometimes you just can't figure it out. Like David, he said, give me, Lord, give me understanding according to thy word. And the, uh, the problem is that uh, there are things that we're not going to know until we get to glory. You remember the, the song we do? Farther along we know all about it. Farther along, we'll understand why. It says, cheer up, my brother. Live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. 1 Corinthians 13, 12, for now we see through a glass. Darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. That's a, a proof text for the fact that we will know each other in heaven. Why wouldn't we? We're going to not, not know less. We're going to know more. Moses and Elijah appeared with the Lord on the Mount of Transfiguration. They all recognized him, knew who they were. How about the verse that says, Many shall come from the north, south, east, and west and sit at the feet of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. It don't say many will sit at the feet of a Two or three guys. It names them by name. We're going to know each other. We'll know as we're known. Another thing we know from Scripture is God knows the ending from the beginning. I've, I know that God knows all the variables to every decision that I make. If I choose to, this, to do this, God knows the ending of where I started. You computer-friendly people, which I'm not in that group, but you know if you program something into that computer, whatever program you put in that, it's going to turn out a certain way. God knows every variable. No matter what decision you make, God knows how it's going to end up. He knows the ending from the beginning. Uh, but, you know, tragedy comes to us and, and we can't see how it's all going to wind up. Why did that happen? Why did this happen? Why is this coming into my life? And sometimes we just don't know. The 
preacher said in Ecclesiastes 7 15, all things have I seen in the days of my vanity. There is a just man that perisheth in his righteousness, and there is a wicked man that prolongeth his life in his wickedness. Another place it says the rain falls on the just and the unjust. One event happeneth to us all. You can't figure all that out. I don't understand that. You don't understand that. We often uh, speak of the patience of Job. Job lost everything he had. Man, he lost it all. His family, his health, everything but his life. It says in Job 122, In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. You need to be careful about that. Things happen in your life. You, 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 you need to come back to the fact that, that you're a sinner and God loved you enough to save you from your sins. He told the disciples to rejoice rather because your names are written in heaven. We can lose that joy over tragedy that comes to our life. And, and God says, rejoice always. Yeah. And again, I say rejoice. Job didn't have a clue. Job didn't know what was going on in his life, neither did his best buddies. His buds didn't know what was going on with him. Job said in Job 13, 15, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. No matter what happens, I'm going to trust him. Through his afflictions, it says in Job 23, 3, oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat that I would order my call before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would know the words which he would answer me and understand what the, he would say unto me. Will he plead against me with his great power? No, but would he put strength in me? No, it says no, but he would put strength in me. That's what we need. I got, I got down and out. Not long ago over all the funerals and all the grief and all the crying and the old song said the crying and the dying and the shooting and the lying and the fellow with the... Remember that old song? Yeah, Don used to sing that line. I got down on it, man. I don't know if I can handle all this. And, and, and what, what God, God showed me that, that through all this, it gives me opportunity after opportunity to preach to a crowd that may have never heard a clear-cut gospel message of the simplicity of Jesus Christ. Instead of being down and out, I need to rejoice that God has given me the health and the opportunity to do what God has put me to do. You get down, oh, why is this? Oh, you rascal that God done. God sometimes he'll smack my jaw. People lose someone, man, they love so dearly. The first natural uh, reaction is to contend with God. You can't go there. As Christians, you need to leave that alone. Look at Job, what, what Job did. We have to yield to that, that precious Holy Spirit of God and, and seek his strength. We don't pray for these burdens to go away. We pray for the strength to bear the burdens, the strength and the power of the Holy Ghost of God. Paul said in Romans 15, 13, that we should abound in hope to the power of the Holy Ghost. Hey, we can lose something or someone who's very precious, very precious to us, but that's not the end of the story. It's not over for a Christian, it's not over. It's just the beginning. We can lose our jobs. We can lose our health, our homes, even uh, ones that we love. And, and, and we will hurt deeply. But the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 4 that we sorrow not as others which have no hope. But we will sorrow. We will grieve. Our Lord was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. When Lazarus died, Jesus wept. He is touched. We have, he is touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Sometimes we think that, Lord, just don't care what I'm going through. A master cares not that we perish. Remember that? The disciples in a sinking ship, they thought. Cares not? Sure he cares. Ever doubt that he cares? Look to Calvary. Oh, he cares. First of all, then, we like David. 
we should seek the comfort of the scriptures. And sometimes that's difficult. My mama, she had a lot of strange old hillbilly sayings. But, but she had a saying, said, now it's okay when it happens to everybody else. We're okay. You know, it happened to my neighbor. It happened to this one and that one in the church. But he said, but, she said, but when it happens to General Blackbird, that's what she called it, when it happens to you. When it happens to General Blackbird, it's a little different. It's okay when your neighbors have problems, but when it happens to you, it's a little bit different. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Romans 15, 4, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, scriptures, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. There's comfort in that old black book. There's comfort there. Romans 15, 13, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of of the Holy Ghost, there's that strength that we need from God. Our God is a God of hope and a God of all grace. He's a God of comfort. But the God of all grace, it says in 1 Peter 5, 10, who hath called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. For if we suffer with him, we will reign with him. For we know that the sufferings of this life are not to be compared to the glory that is to be revealed. We can't see that sometimes. Job trusted and uh, resolved himself to the fact that whatever God did in his life, he had a right to do it. Job 9.3, if if he will contend with him, he cannot answer him one of a thousand. He is wise in heart, mighty in strength, who hath hardened himself against him and hath prospered. Don't turn against God when when, when all things start to come down on you. Solomon wrote in Proverbs 21.30, there is no wisdom, nor understanding, nor counsel against God. Man, that's a tough one. I deal with that in in, in my addictions class. Someone will have an idea that, man, I think it's this way. But God's counsel says it's just the opposite. It's something very different than what you've been taught all along. So first we seek according to God's word. We seek the comfort of the scriptures. Then secondly, we seek the counsel of the scriptures. We just saw that there's no counsel against the Lord, but there is counsel with the Lord, in the Lord, from the Lord. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He's a God of all comfort. He's a God of all counsel. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4, 15, For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God, for which cause we faint not, but that though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. What's the song I think Gary is saying that said, Many things about tomorrow I don't try to understand. I don't know who. I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring, but I know who holds tomorrow. I don't know what God has for me tomorrow. You don't know either what God has for you. James 4.14, whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Brother Phil, in Sunday school this morning, quoted Romans 8, 28, for we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. That's hard, that, that, that's hard sometimes. Do you believe God? Believe what he says. Seek comfort and counsel through the scriptures. 
I know that in the end, uh, hey, everything's going to be all right. I remember the day my daddy died. We'd been to uh, Baltimore, Maryland, uh, uh, playing music. The boys from Indiana and dad rode along uh, the tour bus with us because he was going blind and he saw an eye doctor from the National Institutes of Health. And, and we're coming back home. We just got home and I went to the house and, and then I got a call from my brother Jerry out at the garage where we parked the bus. Says, uh, Tom, you need to get mom and come out here. Said, I think dad's gone. Man, I about panicked and went and picked up my mama. That old farmhouse drove down the road. As we were pulling in, the funeral director ran the squad at the time, Charlie Morton. He was doing this. We walked in. My mama began to grieve and shout out, what a day. I turned around. We headed back down that old road that... I grew up on, we've been in that same house my family had since 1952, driving down that road. And it was 1989. Mama grieving. I said, Well, Mom, Dad was saved. He walked the aisle, trusted Jesus Christ under the preaching of Reverend Cavanaugh at Hogan Hill Baptist Church. Took Jeff and all the grandkids. Took them to church with him. I said, Mom, it's going to be okay. If Dad saved, we'll see him again. All of a sudden, that peace of God that passes understanding came over me and, 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 and just lifted that burden off my shoulder, and I knew that everything was going to be okay. The comfort of the Scriptures. Mm. You're a child of God here this morning. Scripture should give you comfort. It gives you counsel. Paul said in Ephesians 1.11 uh, that God worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. And then here in our text this morning, the comfort of the Scriptures, the counsel of the Scriptures. Thirdly, we should always be looking for the promise of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Woo, doggy, he's coming, folks. Hey, he's coming. I don't care what anybody else, says. I don't care what the local news says. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming back for his church. Amen. Scripture says in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Comfort, counsel, and the coming of our Lord. He could show up any time. Right in the middle of your worst battle and worst struggle, the Lord might step out on the cloud and you'll have perfect peace. He'll say, come up hither. My, 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 my. Ecclesiastes 3.11, he hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in their hearts so that no man can find the work of God. The work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. He said, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow. I know here that I have the scripture of truth to comfort me, to counsel me. And these things are written that you might know. These things I've spoken, they might believe in Jesus Christ. The uh, Bible says that it was written that you might know about Jesus Christ. They, these are they that testify of me. Comfort of the scriptures, counsel of the scripture, and the promise of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're here this morning, you don't have that peace, you don't have that comfort. It'd be a good time to come to the Lord. Come to the Lord. I'm done. If everyone stand up, the piano player, song leader, come. He'll give comfort and counsel. He's going to call, call his bride home here any day, just any day now. Our Lord is coming. He'll be returning. Are you and me? Seek his counsel. Seek his comfort. 
and know that he's coming and coming soon. Behold, I come quickly. The last prayer in the Bible is, even so, come, Lord Jesus. My, my, the altar is open. 356, 356.